Welcome to Power Charting. I'm your host, Bruce Frazier. This week, we have a very special episode. We are going to do chart reading the Wyckoff way, and we are going to do it with a Tesla case study. Special guest today is the amazing, my dear friend, Ramon Bogomazov. Ramon, thank you so much for being here. Well, Bruce, thank you so much, and thank you for your kind words. Always great to come back to Power Charging and do you know some content together. And this is a very interesting content because a case study is something that uh, is very useful to our students uh, and to traders. Uh, and we will be discussing a lot of uh, different ways of how we analyze the chart, how we tactically think about the uh, execution of trades. Uh, so a lot of great stuff inside of this case study. What is so special about Wyckoff as a chart reading methodology that's unique from other approaches? Well, I would say, Bruce, that to me personally, it's all about in seeing what institutions are doing through the chart, right? So the price and volume is always reflective of their steps. Are they buying? Are they selling? And we know that institutions are the ones that are creating major trends. Uh, and if you follow the trends, this is where you're making money. So by identifying what institutions are doing through the chart reading, we could kind of like, you know, tag alone and trade it alone and make money right. alone together with those, you know, very knowledgeable, smart money uh, that are uh, institutional types. So as I recall, uh, Richard Wyckoff would say, you can see the motives of the composite operator, the very large informed institutions in their footprints in the stock charts. Mm -hmm. So it, there is a methodology by which we can see the footprints of these very large informed interests as they operate in the markets. I ask that just as a question. Um, Absolutely. Not, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, some of the kind of like rudimentary questions that we have from students, well, how do you see institutions on the chart? Like, is this in the price? Is this in the volume signature? Is this in some kind of indicators? And yes, all of the above. I mean, like you could uh, definitely um, find some volume spikes that will be extremely institutional uh, type of trades. Uh, that are being seen on the chart. And you could look at the result of that uh, volume increase and look at what the price is doing and make some kind of deductions about what institutional intention is at this structural spot. And then obviously it's not just like at one spot, but then when you look at the whole structure, let's say of the trading range, you see the intentions there of profit taking, uh, absorption, distribution, and you just need to be familiar with the way and the uh, looks of how it should be shown to you on the chart. And once you learn that those concepts and when you start seeing them on the chart, then you could trade alongside uh, of those big institutional types. So we the best way to teach this, the best way to learn this is with the case study method which was the process that we used at Golden Gate University with Dr. Hank Pruden. And uh, so we very much uh, developed our craft and all of our students developed their craft with the case study method. We have one here today, which is Tesla. So uh, let's get started. What do we, what do we have do here with Tesla? And we can talk about these great concepts as we go. Okay. All right. So Bruce, here is the weekly chart of Tesla. Uh, and we are looking at the case study uh, that starts uh, in 2017, mid 2017. We kind of like seeing uh, that the uptrend here is uh, concluded with some kind of uh, short term climactic run, uh, stopping action as the buying climax. Uh, we're seeing that the volume signature increase signifies not just the uh, presence of demand, but also emergence of supply. And usually we would say that this is the area where CO or value investors are going to be uh, selling. And there could be different reasons for that them selling at that point. Their models could be showing that, uh, well, this is uh, the 
or overbought conditions. This is overvalued uh, environment. And their models will be saying, like, this is where we are taking profits. This is where we will start distributing the stock. And usually after the buy-in climax, uh, we could have the persistency of selling continue. And at some point, there's going to be a synchronization between the emergence of selling and then the uh, uh, increase of the downward result. And usually that happens on the change of behavior reaction. And this is where our expectation will be that after a change of behavior reaction, the trading range boundaries, at least for some time, will be defined. And the trading range boundaries uh, are given to us as a guideline of where the price should spend the majority of the time consolidating. And we kind of see this into the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, and even further uh, down the road here, it's just that we are starting to have the uh, more weakness here going into 2018. Bruce, what are your first initial thoughts as how the uptrend stops, how we are going into the trading range, I mean, what would be some of the indications uh, to you that, you know, I have to change my trading tactics here from uptrend to a trading range? We have uh, five weeks of persistent up move uh, there at the end into the highs. And if we are uncertain whether that's a buying climax or not, we can see in the last two weeks the uh, narrowing range of the bars which is a compression of those bars and a big increase in the volume. That demonstrates that there are sellers over the market and they're selling all the stock they can without pushing the price down on themselves, which is what allows that compression to occur in the spread of those weeks. The other thing that I see that's so important there is that change of behavior reaction, we would call that an automatic reaction. And I always think of it as a buying climax, the move into a buying climax and the automatic reaction as a paired set. Both things should happen in, uh, simultaneously to each other. That's the very important concept in Wyckoff is the buying climax peak and the automatic reaction low sets the trading range for the foreseeable future. And that's exactly what happens here. Roman automatically drew those support and resistance lines. Imagine being able to draw those lines right at the beginning of a trading range. That's exactly what you can do with this methodology. The other thing I notice here is as we get into 2018, late 2018, that even though you can get below the support level, you come right back up into the trading range again, which means the trading range really does have dominance. So I see those as being uh, exceptionally important and uh, we can see that this is all uh, building up a process for some kind of a uh, uh, weakness into uh, 2019. So uh, that's what I see um, mm -hmm. primarily. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I wanna come back to 2017 a little bit. Uh, there are a lot of tactical decisions that uh, are bound to happen here for us because uh, when we look at the conclusion and uh, into the climactic uh, action and then uh, automatic reaction change of behavior, our expectation is that uh, this is still bias wise is to the upside. Uh, there is no significant change here in the bias. I mean, like we are not retracing majority of the uptrend. Uh, this is very healthy reaction uh, on the change of behavior. And our expectation that after some consolidation, we're going to have some kind of continuation. But the picture changes. And I think that the picture changes around the secondary test right here. This rally that comes to the top of the buying climax resistance here has all of the favorable bullish characteristics on diminishing selling. But yet, look at how it creates just a touch of the buying climax, whereas the market itself is doing what? It's actually extending above that resistance. And we're starting to see that Tesla relative to the S&P is starting to lose its relative performance. And that is an extremely important uh, change of behavior in itself that kind of tells us that, yeah, now we're going to be in the trading range and probably we're going to underperform. 
So at this point, Bruce, to me personally, I'm kind of losing interest in this stock and I'm looking at something else. Maybe I'm even trading just the index or maybe some other stocks uh, that are outperforming Tesla. Uh, and especially going into the next lower high right here that shows when the market is climacting into the 2017, early 2018 run. That was beautiful, by the way. Such good trading there. Very simplistic. Lots of money to be made. But Tesla is nowhere... Uh, there and this weakness is suggestive if the market reacts tesla is gonna outperform to the downside meaning that it's gonna be weaker and actually there was a short trade right here uh with that type of short-term swing trade with that type of logic bruce i would add to that that if in the relative strength at that very time we see the 39 week moving average, three quarters of a year moving average and the relative strength now below that moving average and it the moving average has turned down. So we now have the conditions forming for a confirmed downtrend in relative strength. And when the institutions see that, they start to go other places where they see better relative performance in the moment. So we know there are a number of S&P stocks that are going up and are leading the market higher that have good relative strength and Tesla at that time is not one of them. So the short sale I think really makes sense as it attempts to rally up into the declining 39 in addition to seeing the uh, characteristics in the bars and all of those bars that occur on that downtrend uh, generally are in a rising state and the volume is quite high relative to the volume that precedes it. Mm -hmm. And we could expect some underperformance right here. Looking at the comparative analysis right here, we're seeing lower low, whereas the market is making a slightly higher low. That is, again, suggestive that Tesla is weaker. We're seeing this in the relative, under the moving average, uh, down sloping, low highs, lower lows. So relative is uh, confirming the comparative analysis as well. And because the market is stronger, again, you're trading something else. So you're trading the market uh, against Tesla. And you're definitely expecting that out of this weakness, we're not going to have the rally that's going to, let's say, like in the market, uh, let's say, slightly overcome into the up thrust condition. Although it, it does touch it right here. Um, but I would say like, I'm definitely observing a lot of increased of volatility in this area. That is always a suggestion for more bearish behavior. So one of the things here, um, I would be looking for some kind of short ideas. And obviously I would be looking at the structure. So for instance, if we are stopping here and I'm gonna kind of like cover this up and I'm going to say, okay, well, what if this is a selling climax for this formation? Automatic uh, rally, secondary test. Here is our initial trading range. Here is our high boundary right here. And then as we are, you know, there might be some kind of assumption, well, could this be a potential phase C? Very interesting question. But look at how the volume signature is actually relatively high to the stop in action itself. So a little bit of question mark to the strength behind such volatile up and down moves right here. You could potentially have a, a long swing trade here with an expectation that uh, a change of behavior should happen. And a change of behavior is going to be the rally that should overcome the resistance in a sign of strength uh, manner. And then the backing up action should come exactly to the support with an idea that there's going to be a resumption to the uh, to the upside. Now, that obviously does not materialize. We do not have the rally that overcomes the resistance. We do not have the price that uh, start testing uh, above that resistance. And that in itself shows weakness and suggests continuation to the downside. And together with the market that has already deteriorated at that point, you kind of have an, an extremely interesting short a uh, uh, short idea here uh, where uh, Tesla finally follows the market and still stays underperforming for quite some time while the market is up. And that is, again, suggestive that there is no selection here for us until there is a proper change of behavior. Bruce? 
in Wyckoff, if we were to characterize this whole trading range as a reaccumulation, because markets will go up, stocks will go up, and then they'll consolidate for a period of time, and this is two years, roughly, is that we expect to see if it's good reaccumulation, that volatility will come out of the price bars and the trading range as you get later and later into the reaccumulation, which demonstrates absorption of shares. We do not see that happening here. We see a lot of volatility as you get further and further into the structure, which should, and we're always adjusting our views as we go through time and we see more data, we can very much see that this does not look like it's under absorption or under accumulation as it gets further into this area. And the volatility is really being demonstrated on the declines more so than on the advances. Advances are substandard. The declines are uh, uh, have a lot of ease of movement and volatility in them. I would also, and this is just a concept that you know, uh, we've been discussing in our classes uh, for the last probably like three years. There are some very complex trading ranges uh, the, where uh, the bias could be changing like this. So let's say like up bias, down bias, up bias. And obviously you could also relate this to the volatility, like low volatility, uh, volatility increase, and then decrease of volatility. And that's kind of like the pattern that we would be looking for. So to me, I would be looking for uh, this three big segments here in this structure where the bias changes from up to down to up and volatility also changes like this. Um, and then obviously there's so much more that could be said about those type of complex uh, trading ranges. Uh, you just need to understand that the environment changes, uh, selling and buying changes based on the, uh, you know, future discount and buy institutions for this particular stock on the market or the industry group. Um, and that's how those complex trading ranges start to unfold. But as we go into the downtrend, we have quite an extension here below the support. And we're still seeing an increase of selling that is going on. And that is on the background where the market is actually outperforming. And actually, there are so many stocks that are just like uh, uh, chasing the prices up since the 2018 uh, Christmas lull. Uh, so Tesla at this point is only interesting to us in terms of shorting. Uh, there is uh, a great short opportunity right here when the market is stopping and it shows that it's going to start reacting. So you want to short uh, the uh, structures that are already in the distributional formation, which Tesla was at this point, and that are weaker. And we're seeing exactly that in Tesla. So very uh, interesting short opportunity right there. And then after that, we are stopping uh, and we're starting to exhibit a less selling after the best rally that we see since this rally right here. So Bruce, how would you start analyzing the chart in this area? Well, we're looking for something akin to a climax. Look at that big bulge of volume in May as you actually have, uh, even though in decline, you can see that the, the spreads are narrowing as you get into the final lows. And then a really good bar on the reversal on good volume off the low. And you have the uh, good rally that follows, which goes right up into the old support zone, which is now new resistance. And that does stop the advance. So we always look for causes to be built. And these causes, which are accumulation, reaccumulation, distribution, redistribution are sideways trading ranges where stock is changing hands in accumulation from weak holders to strong and uh, also in reaccumulations and then in distribution from strong hands to weak. And so we look for the, that's the reason when you have stock going in distribution from str strong hands to weak, that's the reason volatility increases as you go further in time through the structure. And we talk a lot about that, and you can see it in many different ways. Here, uh, just the introduction of the idea of this, and we're going to do more case studies in the future where we're going to profile that. So those would be 
I think the most important things, and I think what we have here is the potential for a more important causal structure being formed off that May, June low. Mm -hmm. One of the things here, when we are seeing the rally like this, and there is always the question, okay, well, uh, is this kind of like a correct change of behavior rally? Well, we definitely seeing a change of behavior rally relative to anything on the last leg down uh, it's it's definitely a different behavior. Now, the next question is, what about testing? Would we have a successful testing? This is step number two for us in our process, change of behavior, testing, and then we want to see some kind of local breakout as a confirmation that the behavior has changed and the test has been successful. Now, the first um idea uh, that uh, would be confirming that test is successful is actually the first down bar. And it looks so ominous, right? So supply is coming in and it's increasing and uh, the spread is increasing and we are under the support now that acts as, as the resistance. Well, we always would, would want to analog this type of situations and this type of bars by identifying identical analog bars in the same structural spot, and then identifying the effort in the result behind uh, these two bars. So I would say spread-wise, they are somewhat close. Maybe the second one is a little bit even uh, more. But then look at the volume signature. What could we say about the effort? I would say that the effort uh, dropped down maybe like 25%. So there is 25% less selling uh, on the similar bar uh, and that already tells us that there is much, much less selling. And with that continuation, we see in a very strong continuation into the climactic action here. What do we see after, after that um, uh, big bar uh, during the testing? There is not a lot to continue here to the downside. And more, uh, more so, the selling is diminishing even more on the spread and on the volume signature itself. And what is also extremely important, if we have defined this trading range as a selling climax and automatic rally, look at where it stops. It stops in the middle of the trading range, and that shows strength, and that shows a change of behavior uh, in itself. And then when we're comparing the same type of attempt to go down by the market, what do we see? We see in how much closer the price comes to that support. So the market suddenly is weaker than Tesla. This should catch our eye immediately. And we should start thinking, why is Tesla showing that strength? There is only one reason why. Either they are selling less or they are selling less and then they are buying as well. And this is the first idea that there is some kind of buying that has happened uh, into this area. And we definitely could identify buying, Bruce, uh, into uh, maybe like on the way down uh, as some value is being created uh, uh, for institutions and they're starting to buy. I also see consistent buying on the change of behavior itself and then some you know smaller buys uh, around the testing process. And also just to point out that the relative strength of the S&P in May, June makes a low and then makes higher lows thereafter, and it's now starting to approach its downtrending long-term moving average. And in the case of Tesla to its peer group, the automotive stocks is actually above, is uh, looks like it's uh, trying to establish a leadership position to the group as a whole. So that also is a, 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 a positive or a bright light for this uh, stock going forward. Mm -hmm. Bruce, we, I want I want to ask a, you a question. Yeah, yeah, yes. go ahead. We have about wanna, a minute and a half left, so just okay. And I'm thinking maybe it's just like part one, and then let's just record part two right away. Could we do that? We absolutely can do that. Yeah, without the stop. Okay, yeah, let's just keep going. Great, and I think then then you know they could edit this uh, part. Okay, uh, so how about this? How about this question, Bruce? So we are seeing that something is different going on. So some change of behavior is going on. Now, the next question in my mind would be to assess like, what is the potential uh, for the price to advance? Like, is this, I'm seeing the leadership 
uh, emerging in the stock relative to the market, relative to the group. But is there enough fuel bros uh, in this structure that you know would take us to a meaningful high beyond the highs that we have had? Uh, I don't think we have that quite yet. I think we're building structure, but I think that there, uh, I would expect that there's um, more work to be done in terms of building cause for higher prices, but, uh, oh, and there's a point in figure. Uh, we'll sign off and to see some uh, blogs that I've done in the past, uh, go to the description of this uh, uh, webinar, this YouTube, and I'll have the links in there for you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.